Uh, I am John Zupak. I'm the CEO of Threat Quotient. And, and there's a lot of talk in our industry about technologies like machine learning, artificial intelligence. One of the things that we believe is the foundation of a security operations center continues to be the analysts, the individuals, right? And so to the extent that technology can make those analysts much more efficient, much more effective, there's, there's tremendous value in that. And so we built ThreatQ, a threat intelligence platform that's all about transforming threat data into usable or actionable threat intelligence. At the end of the day, it's about making those analysts smarter, more efficient. So if we take a look at a day in the life of the analyst, this is not new to anybody, but it's worth repeating a couple of points. A dynamic threat landscape, changing computing models, the latest seems to be IoT, a lack of resources, uh, there's very few organizations that can find enough smart people to do the task at hand. Most of the CISOs that I speak with have volumes of vendors that they deal with. It's not unusual to have 20, 30, 40 vendors. These applications are all generating their own reports, their own incidents, their own alerts, oftentimes which need to be handled manually by these overworked analysts. So there needs to be a better way to help those individuals at the task of fighting the bad guys. The industry has responded in a certain way by creating, in some cases, very large research, research organizations that generate threat data, oftentimes very, very usable threat data. The problem is, if you look at that, they tend to be siloed to the proprietary applications. So where a Cisco Talos creates very usable information for our customers, they tend to be targeted at the Cisco products. What that results in is multiple silos of threat data. If we take this a step further, we've seen the development of threat and tell platforms, sharing platforms. Many of you are probably using those today. Really effectively what that is is the introduction of yet more silos of threat data. So as a foundational element of our technology, what we've developed is this concept of a universal threat data model. The ability to bring that threat data in, to put it in a common model, for use by the analysts at the end of the day, again, with the goal being to make those analysts more productive. So let's take a look at ThreatQ, our threat intelligence platform. I'm going to take it to a very high level for a second. If we look at what this does, we have the capability of being able to take threat information and data. Notice I didn't use the word threat intelligence yet. That could be data that comes from a third party source, data that is part of your own environment or network. And we provide availability and access and use of that data to the analysts. So that would be the picture in the middle. This notion of context is the exercise of determining which data is relevant to my organization. Not all data, threat data, is equally important to every organization. And so what we want to do is empower those analysts to be able to answer questions like the who, what, when, where, how, and why about threats. Ultimately taking that data into a model of threat intelligence where you're identifying adversaries, campaigns, tactics, techniques. Finally, what the real goal here is to try to help organizations move from what is most traditionally a reactive and response mode into something that's an anticipatory mode. Uh, the ideal situation would be actually to move into a predictive mode, but that's likely something more in the future for most organizations. So if we look a little bit deeper at the product itself, the platform, I like to describe it as an intelligent tip. The description on the, on the slide actually calls it out, I think, in a, in a more direct way. It's a threat operations and management system. You can think of this system as a three-legged stool. The first leg of that stool is what we describe as a threat library. That is the place in which we aggregate and acquire the threat data from any source. We have the abilities to have uh, integration with new sources on a rapid basis. That information is then made available to the analysts in what we describe as the adaptive workbench. What is an adaptive workbench? It's just what it sounds like. It's a work area for the analysts to take make use of analytics that we provide, for them to bring their own analytics and tools to the table, 
for them to have collaboration capabilities with other analysts or other organizations, groups within the organization. So that's the place where the magic of transforming threat data to threat intelligence occurs. And the last leg of this stool is what we describe as the open exchange. Think of APIs, SDKs, to allow us to take it the final mile, which is let's begin to move this threat intelligence that's been curated and is contextually relevant to my environment, and let's start to move it out to my applications, SIMs, IDSs, IPSs, firewalls. That is the threat queue system. Very quickly, profile of the company. We were founded in 2013. I joined at the end of 2015 when we began a rapid growth of this uh, organization. Uh, surrounded the company with well-known folks from the industry, from companies like Sourcefire, Cisco, iSight, General Dynamics. We're funded by NEA, so we've got a great financial partner. I have a who's who board of directors, including folks like Marty Resch, the creator of Stork, founder of Sourcefire. We're located here locally in Western Virginia, also internationally. And I'll be around if anyone would like to talk about it. We would love to chat about our system. Thank you.